1. Prospero, a plump member of the bourgeoisie, full of political economy and other sciences, but of course, of course, we know all about it. There are people suffering from hunger, women prostituting themselves, children dying from a lack of care. You always say the same thing, in the end you become boring. Allow me to savor my galati in peace. Certainly, there are a thousand evils in our society, hunger, ignorance, war, crime, plague, terrible mishaps, so what? Why is it your concern? Michelle, a student who keeps company with socialists and anarchists, I beg your pardon? Why is it my concern? You have a comfortable home, a well-provisioned table, servants at your command, for you everything is fine. And as long as you and yours are all right, even if the world around you collapses, nothing matters. Really, if you only had a little heart. Prospero, enough, enough, don't sermonize. Stop raging, young man. You think I am insensible, indifferent to the misfortunes of others. On the contrary, my heart bleeds, waiter, bring me a cognac and a cigar, my heart bleeds, but the great social problems are not resolved by sentiment. The laws of nature are immutable and neither great speeches, nor mawkish sentimentality can do anything about it. The wise person accepts fate, and gets the best out of life that he can, without running after pointless dreams. Michel, ah. Uh, so we are dealing with natural laws? And what if the poor got it into their heads to correct these, laws of nature? I have heard speeches hardly supportive of these superior laws. Prospero, of course, of course. We well know the people with whom you associate. On my behalf, tell those scoundrel socialists and anarchists, who you have chosen to be your preferred company, that for them, and for those who would try to put in practice their wicked theories, we have good soldiers and excellent carabinieri. Michel, oh. If you are going to bring in the soldiers and the carabinieri, I won't talk any more. It is like proposing a fist fight to demonstrate my opinions are in error. However, don't rely on brute force if you have no other arguments. Tomorrow you may find yourself in the weakest position, what then? Prospero, what then? Well, if that misfortune should come about, there would be great disorder, an explosion of evil passions, massacres, looting, and then it would all return to how it was before. Maybe a few poor people would have become enriched, some rich people would have fallen into poverty, but overall nothing would have changed, because the world cannot change. Bring me, just bring me one of these anarchist agitators of yours and you will see how I will tan his hide. They are good at filling the heads of people like you with tall stories because your heads are empty, but you'll see whether they will be able to maintain their absurdities with me. Michel, all right. I will bring a friend of mine who holds socialist and anarchist principles and I will promote your discussion with him with pleasure. In the meantime discuss matters with me, for while I still don't have well-developed opinions, I clearly see that society as it is organized today, is a thing contrary to good sense and decency. Come now, you are so fat and flourishing that a bit of excitement will not do you any harm. It will help your digestion. Prospero, come on, then, let's have a discussion. But, you ought to know that it would be better if you studied instead of spitting out opinions about matters that are the province of others more learned and wiser. I believe I can give you twenty years. Michelle, this does not prove that you have studied more, and if I have to judge you from what you have been saying, I doubt that, even if you have studied a lot, you have gained much from it. Prospero, young man, young man, really. Let's have some respect. Michelle, all right, I respect you. But don't throw my age in my face, as if in fact you were raising an objection to me with the police. Arguments are not old or young, they are good or bad, that's all. Prospero, well, 
well, let's get on with what you have to say. Michelle, I must say that I cannot understand why the peasants that hoe, sow and harvest have neither sufficient bread, nor wine or meat, why bricklayers that build houses don't have a roof for shelter, why shoemakers have worn shoes. In other words, why is it that those who work, that produce everything, lack basic necessities, while those who don't do anything revel in abundance? I cannot understand why there are people that lack bread, when there is much uncultivated land and a lot of people who would be extremely happy to be able to cultivate it, why are there so many bricklayers out of work while there are lots of people who need houses, why many shoemakers, dressmakers etc. are without work, while the majority of the population lacks shoes, clothes, and all the necessities of civil life. Could you please tell me which is the natural law that explains and justifies these absurdities? Prospero, nothing could be more clear and simple. To produce, human labor is not enough, you need land, materials, tools, premises, machinery and you also need the means to survive while waiting for the product to be made and delivered to the market, in a word, you need capital. Your peasants, your workers, have only their physical labor, as a consequence they cannot work if such is not the wish of those who own land and capital. And since we are few in number and have enough even if, for a while, we leave our land uncultivated and our capital inoperative, while the workers are many and are always constrained by immediate needs, it follows that they must work whenever and however we wish and on whatever terms that suit us. And when we no longer need their labor and calculate that there is no gain from making them work, they are forced to remain idle even when they have the greatest need for the very things they could produce. Are you content now? Could I explain it more clearly than this? Michel, certainly, this is what one calls speaking frankly, there is no question about that. But, by what right does land belong only to a few? How is it that capital is found in a few hands, specifically in the hands of those who do not work? Prospero, yes, yes, I know what you are saying to me, and I even know the more or less lame arguments with which others would oppose you, the right of the owners derives from the improvement they bring to the land, from savings by means of which labor is transformed into capital, etc. But let me be even more frank. Things are as they are as the result of historical facts, the product of hundreds of years of human history. The whole of human existence has been, is, and will always be, a continuous struggle. There are those who have fared well and those who have fared badly. What can I do about it? So much the worse for some, so much the better for others. Woe to the conquered! This is the grand law of nature against which no revolt is possible. What would you like? Should I deprive myself of all I have so I can rot in poverty, while someone else stuffs themselves on my money? Michel, I do not exactly want that. But I'm thinking, what if the workers profiting from their numbers and basing themselves on your theory that life is a struggle and that rights derive from facts, get the idea into their heads of creating a new, historic fact, by taking away your land and capital and inaugurating new rights? Prospero, ah. Certainly, that would complicate matters. But, we shall continue on another occasion. Now I have to go to the theater. Good evening to you all.